The Battle of the Lipari Islands or Battle of Lipara, was a naval encounter fought in 260 BC during the First Punic War. A squadron of 20 Carthaginian ships commanded by Boots encountered 17 Roman ships commanded by the senior Roman consul for the year, Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio, in Lipara Harbour. The Romans' naval inexperience resulted in their entire fleet of their ships being captured. The Romans had built a fleet in order to contest the Carthaginians' maritime control of the western Mediterranean, and Scipio had impetuously ventured to the Liparas with the advance squadron. The battle was little more than a skirmish, but is notable as the first naval encounter of the Punic Wars and the first time Roman warships had engaged in battle. Scipio was ransomed after the battle and known thereafter as Asina. The Romans went on to win the two larger naval encounters that followed and establish a rough seagoing parity. Chapter 1 Primary Sources The main source for almost every aspect of the First Punic War is the historian Polybius, a Greek sent to Rome in 167 BC as a hostage. His works include a manual on military tactics not extant but he is best known for his work The Histories, written sometime after 146 BC about a century after the battle. Polybius's work is considered broadly objective and largely neutral as between Carthaginian and Roman points of view. Carthaginian written records were destroyed along with their capital, Carthage, in 146 BC, meaning Polybius' account of the First Punic War is based on several Greek and Latin sources. Polybius was an analytical historian, wherever possible he would personally interview participants in the events he wrote about. Out of the forty books comprising the histories only the first deals with the First Punic War. The accuracy of Polybius's account has been much debated over the past 150 years but the modern consensus is to accept it largely at face value, and the details of the battle, in modern sources, are almost entirely based on interpretations of Polybius' account. The modern historian Andrew Curry considers that Polybius turns out to fairly reliable, while Dexter Hoyos describes him as a remarkably well informed, industrious, and insightful historian. Other histories of the war exist, but in fragmentary or summary form and usually cover military operations on land in more detail rather than those at sea. Modern historians usually also take into account the later histories of Diodorus Siculus and Dio Cassius, although the classicist Adrian Goldsworthy states that Polybius' account is usually to be preferred when it differs with any of our other accounts. Other sources include inscriptions, archaeological evidence, and empirical evidence from reconstructions, such as the Trireme Olympius. Since 2010 a number of artifacts have been recovered from the site of the Battle of the Agates, the final battle of the war, fought 19 years later. Their analysis and the recovery of further items are ongoing. Chapter 2 – Background Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Operations in Sicily the First Punic War between Carthage and Rome broke out in 264 BC. Carthage was a well-established maritime power in the western Mediterranean, Rome had recently unified mainland Italy south of the river Arno under its control. The immediate cause of the war was control of the Sicilian town of Messana. More broadly both sides wished to control Syracuse, the most powerful city-state on Sicily. By 260 BC the war had lasted four years, and the Romans had pushed forward into Sicily, with a number of successes, including the capture of Agrigentum, an important Carthaginian base. However, the Carthaginian navy repeatedly raided the Romans' rear areas and even the coast of Italy. Their control of the sea also made it impossible for the Romans to successfully blockade those Carthaginian cities which were on the coast. The Carthaginians were engaging in their traditional policy of waiting for their opponents to wear themselves out, in the expectation of then regaining some or all of their possessions and negotiating a mutually satisfactory peace treaty. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Ships During this war the standard warship was the Quinquerum, meaning five-oared. The Quinquerum was a galley, circa 45 meters long, circa 5 meters wide at water level, with its deck standing circa 3 meters above the sea, and displacing around 100 long tons. The galley expert John Coates suggested they could maintain seven knots for extended periods. 
The modern replica galley Olympias has achieved speeds of 8.5 knots and cruised at 4 knots for hours on end. Vessels were built as cataphract, or protected, ships, with a closed hull and a full deck able to carry embarked legionaries as marines and catapults. They had a separate ore box attached to the main hull which contained the rowers. These features allowed the hull to be strengthened, increased carrying capacity and improved conditions for the rowers. In 260 BC the Romans set out to construct a fleet and used a shipwrecked Carthaginian quinquerum as a blueprint for their own. As novice shipwrights, the Romans built copies that were heavier than the Carthaginian vessels, which made them slower and less maneuverable. The quinquerum was the workhorse of the Roman and Carthaginian fleets throughout the Punic Wars, so ubiquitous that Polybius uses it as a shorthand for warship in general. A quinquerum carried a crew of 300, of which 280 were oarsmen and 20 deck crew and officers, it would normally also carry a complement of 40 marines, and if battle was thought to be imminent, this would be increased to as many as 120. Getting the oarsmen to row as a unit, as well as execute more complex battle maneuvers, required long and arduous training. At least half of the oarsmen would need to have had some experience if the ship was to be handled effectively. As a result, the Romans were initially at a disadvantage against the more experienced Carthaginians. All warships were equipped with a ram, a triple set of 60 cm wide bronze blades weighing up to 270 kg positioned at the waterline. They were made individually by the lost wax method to fit immovably to a galley's prow and secured with bronze spikes. In the century prior to the Punic Wars, boarding had become increasingly common and ramming had declined, as the larger and heavier vessels adopted in this period lacked the speed and maneuverability necessary to ram, while their sturdier construction reduced the ram's effect even in the case of a successful attack. Chapter 3, Rattle It was the long-standing Roman procedure to elect two men each year, known as consuls, to each lead their military forces. The patrician Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio, the year's senior consul, was given command of the fleet. He put to sea with the first seventeen ships produced. As the first ever Roman warships they spent some time training in home waters before sailing to Messana. There they prepared for the main fleet's arrival and supported the logistics of the Roman army at the sea crossing to Sicily. While Scipio was at the Strait of Messina he received information that the garrison of the city of Lipera was willing to defect to the Roman side. Lipera was the main port of the Lipari Islands and was a constant threat to Roman communications across the strait. Though his crews were still inexperienced and the newly designed and built ships were still undergoing their sea trials, the consul could not resist the temptation of conquering an important city without a fight and sailed to Lipera. It has been suggested by some ancient sources that the offer to surrender Lipera was a ruse inspired by Carthage to encourage the Romans to commit their ships where they could be ambushed, but the sources do not give much detail and are usually pro-Roman. The Romans entered the harbour at Lipera. The Carthaginian fleet was commanded by Hannibal Gisco, the general who had commanded the garrison at Agrigentum, and was based at Panormus some 100 kilometres from Lipari. When he heard of the Romans' advance to Lipera he dispatched, twenty ships under Boods, a Carthaginian aristocrat, to the town. The Carthaginians arrived at night, and trapped the Romans in the harbour. Boods led his ships in an attack on the Romans inside the harbour the next morning. Scipio's men offered little resistance. The inexperienced crews were no match for the well-drilled Carthaginians and were rapidly outfought. Some Romans panicked and fled inland and the consul himself was taken prisoner, along with many of the other Roman senior officers. Some later accounts have Scipio treacherously captured while parleying, but this is probably a Roman fabrication. All of the Roman ships were captured, most with little damage. The battle was little more than a skirmish, but is notable as the first naval encounter of the Punic Wars and the first time Roman warships had engaged in battle. Chapter 4, Aftermath Scipio was later released, probably ransomed. His easy defeat earned him the pejorative cognomen Asina, which means donkey in Latin. 
This cognomen was all the more insulting because Asina was the feminine form of the word donkey, as opposed to the masculine form Asinus. In spite of this Scipio's career prospered and he was consul for a second time in 254 BC shortly after the Lipera victory, Hannibal Gisco was scouting with 50 Carthaginian ships when he encountered the full Roman fleet. He escaped, but lost most of his ships. It was after this skirmish that the Romans installed the Corvus on their ships. The Corvus was a bridge 1.2 meters wide and 11 meters long, with a heavy spike on the underside, which was designed to pierce and anchor into an enemy ship's deck. This allowed marines to more easily board enemy ships and capture them. Later the same year Scipio's fellow consul, Gaius Duilius, placed the Roman army units under subordinates and took command of the fleet. He promptly sailed, seeking battle. The two fleets met off the coast of Mylae in the Battle of Mylae. Hannibal Gisco had 130 ships, and the historian John Lazenby calculates that Duilius had approximately the same number. Using the Corvus the Romans captured 50 Carthaginian vessels and dealt the Carthaginians a sharp defeat. The wall was to last for another 19 years before ending in a Carthaginian defeat and a negotiated peace. Thereafter Rome was the leading military power in the western Mediterranean, and increasingly the Mediterranean region as a whole. The Romans had built more than 1,000 galleys during the war, and this experience of building, manning, training, supplying, and maintaining such numbers of ships laid the foundation for Rome's maritime dominance for 600 years. Chapter 5, Notes, Citations and Sources Chapter 5 Section 1, Sources